So what we're going to start with in 6.1 is talking about slope fields. Now the way you make a slope field is you have a differential equation. Sometimes it's going to be y prime or they're going to write as dy dx equals, and in this case x minus 1. Other times you'll notice that there's y's involved in there, or it's x times y, or there's not, or there might be no x's involved at all. Now, one of the things that you're going to find out that's nice is when there's only one variable, you can really shorten a lot of your work. So the idea is the slope of the function at any given point is given by this equation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start plotting points. And so like if we want the order pair 0, 0, you plug in 0 for x, you plug in 0 for y. Well, for 0 for x, there's no y, so it's 0 minus 1. So you have a slope of negative 1 at that point. At point zero zero. Now, as far as drawing this, you're only going to draw like a little tick mark at that spot, and you're going to do your best with the slope. If it was negative two, you try to make it a little steeper. But since it's negative one, I'm right at that 45 degree angle. If it was a positive one, I would go right this way. If it was zero, I'd make it horizontal. And if it was undefined, I would go vertical, like divided by zero. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try plot one for each of these. Now, there's a lot of points on here. There's one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five, 25 different points. And that would be crazy if I had to plot all of them. And sometimes you do, but we want to look for patterns. So what about the point zero, one instead of zero, zero? Well, you plug in zero for x and, the, oh, well, the fact that y was one didn't make any difference. I still get a slope of negative one. So since there is no y in this equation, all I got to worry about is all the x's. And everywhere the x is 0, my slope is going to be negative 1. Okay, now what about if x is 1? Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. So when x is 1, I have a slope of 0. Okay, well, if x was 2, it would be 2 minus 1 or 1, a positive 1. So the y's don't matter because there's no y in the equation. So we plot those points. Now if we try x to be negative 1, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So it's hard to do negative 2. I'm just going to try to make it a little bit steeper than negative 1. Now I usually end up personally going and making it almost vertical really, really fast. Um, if we go to negative 2, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, so it should be even steeper. So just do your best with this. Now, one of the things that they ask you to do at the end is to plot your slope field going through a particular point. So let's say we had the particular point, um, negative 1, 1. So we have that particular solution. So what we would do is we go over to negative 1, 1, we would plot a dot there, and then we would just try to follow the slope field along that point to get a possible graph. Now this particular differential equation, especially because there's just one variable, if you think about doing the integral of both sides, you're going to get an x squared, and hopefully you understand why it should be a parabola. Just thinking about doing the antiderivative of this equation. The problem is you can't always do an antiderivative. So over here you can't really do the antiderivative of both sides because there's a y over here. But we can do our slope field, and we can get an idea of what it should look like. All right, so we got to look for patterns, but at first glance, you probably don't see any. Now, if I go 0 minus 0 for the 0, 0 points, I get 0. Okay, so let's try 0, 1 like we did before. Well, it's going to be 0 minus 1, so negative 1. 0 minus 2, so negative 2. Okay, if I go down, 0 minus a negative 1 is going to be a positive 1. 0 minus a negative 2 is going to be a positive 2. Okay, well, that kind of makes some sense. It's a little easier to see. So here's another easy point to do. 1, 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. Oh, seeing some patterns here. A 2, 2. 2 minus 2 would be 0. Okay. What about negative 1, negative 1? Negative 1 minus negative 1 becomes a plus 1 or 0. Okay, so this looks like it's all true on the diagonal. Now before we get carried away, for that to be true, then this point would have to be have a slope of 1 if we follow this diagonal up. So let's try that out. 1, 0. 1 minus 0 is, yeah, that works out. So we'll find out that this one actually is symmetric about the diagonal. And this one was 
positive 2. And as you get farther out, it actually begins steeper. We actually end up with a slope, sorry, a, um, a slant asymptote for this one. And you see this going on here? So let's try at this point right here. We want to make sure it should be kind of something along that line because we should have this negative 1 kind of coming down here, right? So we plot the point 2, 2. Sorry, this is 1, 1, 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So it does fit. And then outside that, we have a negative 2. So you want to come up with a pattern. And you want to try to trust it, but you don't really want to trust it so much so that you... You know, things can happen weird on different sides. You look over here, you're like, okay, yeah, these are all just negative slopes. And over here, wait, these are all positive slopes. And in this quadrant, they kind of switch. In this quadrant, they switch as well. So you don't want to get too uh, crazy about, you know, making your assumptions unless you actually check them out. So that's really what you do for a slope field. You plot all the points you can and run it through there. Now, there's a totally different answer. If my... Let me get rid of all these so they're not confusing. These are just points that I was talking about. So if I have my particular solution at, so let's go negative 1, 0 in this case. Right here, I would get a, a particular solution that would look kind of like this. And it would approach this slant asymptote. And if it kept going, it would follow that slant asymptote. But if I had a particular sol solution of 1, negative 1, boom, boom, I would get an entire entirely different answer. I still approach the slant asymptote, but from an entirely different way. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about later on is um, carrying capacity in like a population of fish in a tank. So one option here, to, just to kind of make you think about this, is if you have too many fish in the tank, what's going to happen to the tank's population? You're going to start with a huge population and it's going to slowly die down to some sort of a you know, a line, a steady state where, you know, everybody's happy. If you have few fish in the tank, they're going to populate until they get to that steady state. They're going to come up from the lower end until their population reaches that optimal living environment for the tank. So I want to take a second and talk about what this part's asking about. It says match each slope field with the equation of the slope field it could represent. So it's not saying that we want the slope field of these equations. It's saying this is the actual equation. So which one of these could be y equals 1? Well, it's the one with these horizontal lines here because that's y equals 1. You know, this could also be like y equals 5, y equals 7. All right, like this could be like the y equals 5, y equals 3. Any of those could be the answer. This guy right here could be like a cosine function. This right here looks like an x squared function. It could be x squared plus 2, it could be x squared minus 3, it doesn't really matter, but it looks like an x squared. Whereas this kind of looks like a sine function. Now the sine and the cosine are a little bit weird because um, they get shifted up or down. But you notice that cosine of 0 has to equal 1, and cosine is flat at 0. So this would be the cosine function, whereas this one would be the sine function. So as you look at these answers right here, you've got to think about what their actual graphs are. So y equals x, that's h. It looks like that. We're going to talk about the sine and the cosine. You have an x cubed graph in there somewhere. Now, there's a couple that you might have to do between 11 and 14. You might want to look at their graphs anyway. But 1 over x squared, if you don't know, should definitely should have a vertical asymptote at 0, right? So whatever one you're looking at, you should have a vertical asymptote at 0. And x squared is positive, so everything's going to be positive on both sides. So that's what this is getting at down here. Um, if you look at the problems later than this, these are the ones that most people are expecting. These are the ones that are slope fields. So if you were to plot your ordered pairs on here, then you're trying to match. Now a couple things to notice. This equation doesn't have a y. So that means as you move up and down, they should be the same. Whereas this one, we actually graph one very similar to this already. Actually, I think we graph this one already. Um, but as we move up and down, there's one of these that when you move up and down it shouldn't change. But here if you go up and down, oh, it doesn't really seem to change too much. But over here, it looks like it's flat in the middle. If you go up, it definitely changes. This one doesn't change as you move left to right. So this 
is our 15. So 15 is B, because as you move up and down, it doesn't change. So we already know this is C, because we could graph that one already together. This one, the X doesn't is not present, so as you move left and right, it won't change. So that's D, and now 18 has got to be A just by method of elimination. So 